plastique en plastique. For the last century and a half, access to fossil fuels has transformed healthcare as it has every aspect of our society. Available and abundant energy has allowed us to go from low-tech Civil War era medicine to using high-tech devices such as MRI machines. Oil accounts for 41% of the world's total fossil fuel consumption, making it also the world's largest source of energy. Oil is a ubiquitous substance in healthcare. It's used in the production of drugs from the most basic painkillers to the most specific antibiotics. It's used in transportation, both in providing emergency services like ambulances and helicopters, as well as allowing you to make it in to see your doctor when you get sick or for your yearly physical. Everywhere we turn, our modern healthcare system and our entire way of life is dependent on oil. And for most of our lives, oil has been so abundant and so cheap that we simply take it and all of the marbles it provides for granted. But is oil always going to be so abundant? Given how much our healthcare system and our everyday lives rely on oil to function, what would happen if cheap access to oil was no longer possible? Like the extraction of all finite resources, oil extraction can be represented by a pyramid, where the resources that are easiest to access are snatched up first. As the low-hanging fruit is depleted, we are forced to drill deeper and deeper to get the same amount of energy as before. This costs us more in terms of time, money, and energy, and after a certain point, it's simply no longer worth it. In the 1950s, the petroleum geologist M. King Hubbard developed calculations that can successfully predict the total production of oil over time. These calculations can be expressed as a graph called a Hubbard curve, one of the basic tools of petroleum geology. The graph follows a bell-shaped curve where oil production steadily increases until reaching a maximum point or peak near the halfway mark and then gradually declines. At peak, half the oil is still in the ground, but it becomes increasingly costly to extract, costly in terms of time, money, and energy. This peak marks the point of diminishing returns, when it becomes costlier and costlier to obtain the same amount of oil as before. Under these conditions, production drops and eventually declines completely. Oil production in the mainland United States increased every year until 1970, when it peaked and began to decline. Demand for oil, however, continued to grow, and since the 1970s, the U.S. has had to make up for the shortfall in domestic production by importing oil from abroad. When a country's oil production peaks and then begins to decline, it can import oil from other countries. This is exactly what's happened all across the globe as oil exporting countries such as Indonesia, Australia, the U.K., and the United States have become oil importing countries, faced with rising domestic demand and declining production. Importing oil allows an individual country to keep consuming oil even when it doesn't produce any itself. But what happens when global production of oil hits peak? Unless we can start importing oil from space aliens, we are in trouble. And there are a number of indications that we have already hit peak oil or are on the verge of doing so. According to Fatih Birol, chief economist of the International Energy Agency, global oil production peaked in 2006 and the age of cheap oil is over. So what does this mean for public health? In the context of a society that is addicted to cheap oil, the implications are immense. Nearly every item within a medical establishment is derived from or requires the use of petroleum. Gloves, syringes, tubing, medication, and soap is manufactured from, packaged in, and transported by oil and oil products such as plastic. Many of these items are intended for single use only and are made in vast quantities with the assumption that we can always make more. In the inevitable event of oil scarcity, the public health infrastructure of every country will be affected severely. The Green Revolution of the 1950s had a profound impact on modern agriculture. Large, industrial-scale monocrop farming overtook smaller farms. This has led to the heavy use of pesticides and fertilizers. 
many pesticides require hydrocarbons as starting materials, rely on petroleum-derived plastic bottles as containers, and require oil as fuel in the process of transportation. Petroleum also serves as the base for most fertilizers. Cheap petroleum has allowed us to create a food economy based on just-in-time delivery of produce and has also made us used to transporting food across the country and internationally instead of producing it locally. This has also made us accustomed to eating food out of season. Nearly every aspect of modern food production relies on heavy inputs of oil, from petrochemical-based fertilizers to tractors that are manufactured by and run off of oil to the trucks and planes that rely on oil to transport and refrigerate food. As the cost of oil increases, so too will the cost of producing and transporting food. Presently in the United States, approximately 12.6 million households identify themselves as being food insecure. This means they have difficulty in obtaining adequate amounts of food for their families. This number will only increase as petroleum-based operations within the farming industry become weakened due to rising oil costs and shortages. Even the most minor disruptions to food supplies may cause widespread shortages and in some areas malnourishment. Whether we realize it or not, many pharmaceuticals are actually based on phenols, anhydrides, amines, and aldehydes, which are derivatives of long hydrocarbon chains. Common drugs like aspirin are produced by the Kolbe-Schmidt reaction that uses phenol as a starting material. Patients may be unable to acquire long-term supplies of needed medication or may need to wait for indeterminate periods of time as pharmaceutical companies need to develop alternative pathways for drug synthesis routes. Of course, in order to obtain a prescription, a patient must go see a doctor in a hospital or clinic. Like other buildings, most hospitals have been designed on the assumption that they can be powered, heated, cooled, and accessed through infrastructure which runs on cheap energy. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, American hospitals use 836 trillion BTUs of energy annually and have more than 2.5 times the energy intensity of commercial office buildings. This means that hospital operations will be severely affected by oil scarcity. Peak oil will profoundly affect transportation. In the event of an emergency, ambulatory care, helicopter evacuations, and air delivery for organ transplants may become more expensive, potentially increasing the negligence associated with rural and underserved communities. In general, peak oil will exacerbate issues surrounding unequal access to care, potentially worsening existing conditions that many residents of neglected and underserved communities presently face. Right now, most Americans rely on their employers to provide health insurance, but since the economy is intimately tied to energy, recession will likely follow in the wake of constrained oil supplies. This will result in the reduction of employer-sponsored health care plans, increasing the already large number of Americans without health insurance. Rising fuel prices will affect anyone having to commute to work, supermarkets, hospitals, or schools especially those from poorer socioeconomic backgrounds. Some communities may suffer from malnutrition as a result of food shortages. In addition, poor communities may also suffer higher rates of mental illness due to the stress associated with deteriorating social and economic conditions. With scarcer, more expensive oil on the horizon, it is prudent that we explore energy alternatives to petroleum. However, this is not as simple as it sounds, and currently none of the alternatives to conventional oil will provide us with the energy required to maintain our current way of life. Renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, and geothermal cannot replace oil as an industrial feedstock or as a liquid fuel. While they may be able to provide electricity, in many cases they have a relatively low net energy yield. For example, this means the amount of energy a solar panel produces throughout its life may be very small compared to the amount of energy required to manufacture, transport, assemble, and maintain the solar panel. Oil provides an enormous amount of net energy, higher than any other energy source we presently know of. Non-renewable sources of energy, such as coal, uranium, and natural gas, 
are also finite resources which are subject to the same depletion curve as oil and their use cannot serve as a long-term replacement for petroleum in nearly all cases their net energy yield is also much lower than that of oil it would take decades and millions of dollars to completely retool our infrastructure to run on these different sources of energy an expensive task and one that we may be too late for many proposed energy alternatives also pose numerous public health challenges in and of themselves for example burning coal causes air pollution higher levels of particulate matter and nitrogen containing oxides that contribute to smog emissions in the air this leads to increased incidence of asthma increasing the amount of coal we burn will in turn increase the health problems associated with it burning coal like other fossil fuels also contributes to global climate change which poses health risks of its own hydraulic fracturing which is used in order to obtain natural gas another common alternative fuel source has led to water becoming contaminated with methane benzenes xylenes and naphthalenes in some cases the contamination resulting from these processes is so high that the water can literally be lit on fire this same process is used to obtain oil from shale rock biofuels which are sometimes advertised as being emission free are used in diesel engines that release soot as part of the exhaust system this also creates an incentive for farmers to grow crops for fuel rather than for food in the long run, this contributes to rising food prices and food insecurity around the globe. In addition, the net energy return of biofuels is especially poor when compared to oil. In some cases, the net energy yield is actually negative, meaning that it costs more energy to produce the biofuel than can be recovered from burning it. There are a number of actions we can take individually and collectively to respond to the challenges of peak oil. However, effective preparation will require large-scale systemic changes to the urban development of communities as well as the public health and health care systems that service them. Some of these changes may involve increasing the number of smaller hospitals and clinics so that patients and health care workers don't have to travel such long distances. Physicians will need to include less energy-intensive forms of medicine in their practice. Integrative and alternative treatments, such as TCM, acupuncture, homeopathy, naturopathy, and Ayurvedic medicine, require very low inputs of energy, and increasing their use will in turn reduce our dependence on highly manufactured, processed medications. These treatments also stress preventative medicine, which will increase long-term health and may reduce the need for energy-intensive ambulatory care. In addition to altering health care delivery and practice, public health professionals will need to work with communities in establishing localized food production. This will require consumers to alter their habits by eating vegetables and fruits that grow according to the season and are not imported from other countries. Cuba provides an instructive example in how this can be accomplished. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, Cuban imports of oil and food were drastically reduced, and Cuba developed a local organic food network in order to survive. In a similar fashion, by expanding similar food networks, we can help mitigate the effects of peak oil on our present food system and thereby ensure security and public health. By emphasizing preventative care, reducing the healthcare system's energy dependence, and generating public awareness, we can respond to the effects of peak oil on public health and increase the resiliency of our communities. Bienvenue au monde fantastique en plastique.